name is Carol Cram, and I'm a novelist living on Bowen Island near Vancouver in British Columbia. I write historical novels with a bit of an arts twist. My debut novel, The Towers of Tuscany, tells the story of a female painter in 14th century Italy. Now this was during a time when there were no female painters, so far as we know. The launch of the Towers of Tuscany took place at the Gallery at Artisan Square in Bowen Island. A shaft of sunlight fell across the small panel of the nativity she was painting. Sophia snuffed out of the candle and paused a moment to watch a curl of smoke spiral to the wooden rafters. She wanted to be the smoke, light enough to escape through the tower window and out into the fields, away from her husband, away from San Gimignano, away from her household with its incessant demands, away to paint every day in peace. But such thoughts were fancy, and hadn't her father scolded her often enough for preferring fancy over fact? Readers are really enjoying The Towers of Tuscany, not only because it's a real page-turning novel, but also because of the art and the history. People are interested in all of the amazing skills that went into creating the art of the 14th century. This is actually a secular fresco that to this day is in San Gimignano. Has anybody ever seen it? It's in the uh, Municipal Hall in San Gimignano. It's a little racy. <laughs> it was done about 1320. Actually, it's quite plausible that Sophia would have seen this if indeed Sophia had existed. Here's another one. This, these are frescoes, <coughs> secular frescoes, and I kind of like to think that person down there might well be Sophia waiting for Giorgio to come to bed. I really wanted to share a lot of what I'd learned while researching the novel with people who came to the launch. Let's have a look at the population of Siena, from 1250 to 1348. Hmm? Getting pretty big, woo! Uh-oh. Here he comes. Messer Del Pino opened his mouth to reply, but no sound came out. His eyes stared into Sophia's. They looked startled and seemed to search her face for an answer she could not supply. The ruddiness that had suffused his face with wine and good humor drained to a sickly white as a single strand of bright red trickled from his mouth. Sophia heard a soft grunt. And then the face of the great Messel del Pino, kinsman to one of the two most powerful families in all of San Gimignano, slipped from her view. Close to her right ear, an arrow thunked into the wall. When she raised her head, she already knew what she would see and was surprised that her only emotion was curiosity. Her strong father, with his heavy demands and relentless striving, was bleeding just like any man. His eyes looked straight into her own. His mouth moved as he tried to form words, but she heard nothing above the wailing and screaming that filled the hall. Thank you.